It's tough billing to live up as a Braves pitcher. Last night, Derek Lowe not only fired six innings of one-run baseball, he also hit his first career homer at the ripe old age of 38. And tonight, Tim Hudson takes the mound. It looks to match Lowe not only in the pitching department, but hitting two. Huddy has great career numbers against Washington, 12 and three with an ERA under two, and he'll seek to stay hot against the Nats. The series finale from Turner Field is coming up. It's a beautiful baseball night in Atlanta. And here at Turner Field, we wrap up a three-game series with our nemesis from our nation's capital. The Washington Nationals are in town. The rubber game coming up here at Turner Field. And hey, good evening, friends. It's been a while. Chip Carey along with my partner, Joe Simpson. Great to be back with you for Braves baseball. A record-setting night for the Braves in the Game 2 victory last night. A lot of exciting things happened last night. Chipper's 450th homer. And uh, for Derek Lowe hitting his first ever home run, that was pretty exciting. But the capper came right at the end of the ball game when Craig Kimbrell stepped out there and set a major league record for rookies by earning his 41st save. Check this out. His last 34 appearances, 33 and two-thirds innings of scoreless baseball, only 12 hits allowed over that stretch, 59 strikeouts in those 33 innings, and he has been a perfect 23 for 23 in saves. And our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard, check this out, longest scoreless streaks in the major leagues this season. He's only a third of an inning short of Cliff Lee, who says set the tone this year with 34 straight shutout innings. But Craig Kimbrell has been terrific from day one for a young kid to take over that role and to do what he's doing has been mighty impressive. And yet, he's still got a month to go. 41 and counting indeed for Kid K, Craig Kimbrell, out of the Atlanta bullpen. It's been a busy 24 to 48 hours for general manager Frank Wren. He's bolstered the bench. We'll talk about a couple of those new arrivals for the Braves when we come back to Turner Field right after this.
Series with the Washington Nationals here at Turner Field. Chip and Joe back at the ballpark where it's been an interesting 48 hours for Frank Wren. We all know why Matt Diaz was reacquired by the Braves a couple of days ago. If you didn't hear, Jack Wilson was picked up late last night. And the question is, why? Well, Jack, you know, he's supposed to be here tonight by game time. We expect him to be in uniform. They got him from Seattle. And if you were asking just why, I'd say because he's available. This guy's a former All-Star. He's also a former Silver Slugger Award winner. You can see how much he's played in the big leagues. He's in his 11th year, and he's not a home run hitter per se, but he's got 61 of them in his career. But more importantly, he can really pick it. Outstanding glove man at either short or second, where he's gotten starts this year for Seattle, and he's also played a little third base. He's just another right-handed bat that's going to give the Braves a little more depth on the bench. And right now, that bench looks like this. J.C. Boscan was called up today to be a little bit of insurance behind the plate. And when you put in uh, Matt Diaz in that right-handed spot, too, a lot of options for Freddy Gonzalez late in the ball game, where he can go to Hensky or Diaz or Conrad. He's got some good options to go down the stretch in September. And 27, 28 games of auditioning for a potential spot on a playoff right. roster as well for the Braves on the bench and newly added to the Braves bench. There is the Braves bench getting ready for game three of the series. A beautiful night for baseball. Tim Hudson goes to the mound for Atlanta when we come right back. We could, we could probably arrange that for you. Back at Turner Field with the X-Man, Joe Simpson. And yours truly, Chip Carey. Here's the Washington Nationals lineup presented by their skipper, Davey Johnson. Jason Worth hitting second. Ian Desmond has done a good job back in the leadoff spot for the Washington Club. We've seen enough of Michael Morse and his power in this series. And Chin Ming Wong is on a nice hot streak on the mound. He's the Nationals pitcher for game three. 
And that lineup will go against Tim Hudson, making his 28th start. He's 13-8 and with a 3-10 ERA, but check out his numbers against these Washington Nationals, a team the Braves are just 7-7 seven and seven against this year. Tim's 12-3 and three lifetime against them with a 197 ERA and 6-2 and two against them here at Turner Field. This year he's made three starts against them. He's 2-1 and one with a 237 ERA. He's only given up nine runs to them in three starts, but only five earned. So the Braves' defense let him down a little bit, too. His four keys to pitching success tonight. Well, how about a few more Adam balls? At last start, six and a third innings, 11 hits against the Mets. They were hitting them where they ain't. Tonight, hopefully, they'll be hitting at somebody. And the middle of the order does present some problems. Worth, Zimmerman, and Morse, all very tough outs right now. If he can keep Desmond off the bases and not worry too much about the bottom of the order, Things should go his way tonight. And that would be nice for Atlanta, trying to take a one-game series lead over the Washington Ball Club for the overall matchups in 2011. The Phillies already won today. The Braves at the moment, eight back in the East. Need to win to stay seven and a half back. Behind the front-running Phillies. Yeah! Quickly, two strikes. Here's your umpiring crew for game three. Mark Carlson will call the balls and strikes on a 91-degree night at first pitch. Just missed the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. Just missed. A little front door slider that was very effective last night for Derek Lowe. To short. And a ground ball out. Always a good sign to see those from Tim Hudson early in the game. And here's the rest of the Braves' defense for game three. Outfield, a very speedy one. Hayward, Bourne, and Constanza from right to left. Eric Hinsky giving Freddie Freeman a night off at first base. Eric also hits Chin Ming Wong very well, and Brian McCann back behind the plate. Stands his ankle beginning to feel back to 100%. Good to see him back in there tonight, get some at bats. And a chance to let Martin clear his head just a bit. As Jason Worth bats for the first time. I haven't seen the first two games of the series, but how has Worth looked in the one game he's played at center in this series? Like he's born there. I mean, he has no trouble playing center. Played a lot in center field for the Phillies at times when Victorino needed a day off or was on a disabled list. He's very comfortable in center. And when Davey Johnson went to him with the suggestion of moving to center field, he embraced it. And Davey said, oh, and by the way, I'm going to move you up to second in the order, too. <laughs> and Jason... Had no problems with that either. A little bit outside. As much as Tim pitches inside, and I know he can see Jason Worth's left back pocket, I'd want that pocket tucked in. And the reason is, if he does throw a pitch inside and Worth turns to get out of away from it, the ball might accidentally clip that flap and put him on base. Well, I've heard of Jeffrey Leonard's one flap down, but that's yeah. a different take. Brian McCann took some punishment. Worth stays alive. Two balls, two strikes. Right off the foot. Even with the protective cover over the shoe, that still hurts. Huh. Brian got nailed right in the chest last night with a foul tip in the last inning. Right on his Mizuno. up the middle that went off the second base bag and into center field and Jason Worth aboard with a one out single 
He's got good numbers against Tim in his career, a 321 mark, and added to that right there. Nice at bat. Now Ryan Zimmerman bats. He's a point shy of 300. He took an 0 for 4 collar last night, Chip, but the first game, and really last night too, he was swinging the bat really well. Squaring up a lot of baseballs, especially to right center, which is the way Bourne's going to play him tonight. Let's see if Worth thinks about running. He's got a decent lead at first. Strike one. Zimmerman, sad to see the month of August end. He hit 333 last month at 35 hits in August alone. He finds himself down 0 and 2 here. I put a lot of stock in uh, talking to Bob Brenly, who's now one of the broadcasters for the Cubs. And of course, he managed the Diamondbacks to a world championship. And I asked him at the end of the Cubs series with Atlanta what he thought of the Atlanta Braves' chances in the postseason. He raved about every aspect of their game but one. And he said, I think they certainly have all the ingredients it takes to go all the way. But they are going to have to figure out a way to control the running game. They've got to do a better job there. Let's see if Hudson throws over here. Worth 14 out of 17 in stolen base attempts for Washington this season. And among brave starters, I'd say Tim Hudson's as quick as anybody to the plate. He and Beachy very fast on their release out of the stretch. Into the second deck, foul, one ball, two strikes. That's why when you look at the catcher's box sometimes in a team's game notes, it's a sort of a deceiving stat. You see a catcher only throwing out 10, 12, 15 percent of would-be base dealers. You don't get much help from your starter. That's an awful lot of burden that falls on that man. Yeah, it might be a step worthy of the notes uh, just so that you've got a fair comparison that shows that sometimes there's some pitchers on the mound who don't hold runners very well and that base dealers are highly successful against them. Good stop two and two. Broken bat roller out to second. Here's to get the sure out at first. Worth in safely, but with two outs at second base, and Mike Morris will bat with the base open. Two ground ball outs and a ground ball base hit, and a good pitch there. Kept it down. Slider, short slider, a cutter to the outside part. Caused him to hit it off the end of the bat, break his bat. So good location already for Tim. Good command. Michael Morse has played first base. He's played left field for Washington. He's in left tonight. And he is the subject of our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. And boy, he has in his last seven games against the Braves. Three homers, six RBIs. He scored seven runs in those seven games. And he homered again last night. He's had a great series here. Four for nine, two homers. Remember, early in the year, we talked to Jim Riggleman, who was then the manager of the Washington Club, and they were intrigued about the potential of Michael Morse. He'd never had more than 266 major league at bats in a single season. That came last year. He hit 15 homers. Well, this season, Morse with 24 home runs and a 317 average. 
Here's his 24th last night off Derek Lowe to lead off the seventh inning. You got to be really strong for a right handed batter to hit one out that way at Turner Field and he and Zimmerman have both done that in this series. So in a season that's been. A 63 and 71 year. Mike Morris has been a very very big positive development for the Nationals ball club. He's down on three pitches to end the top of the first inning. Good frame for Tim Hudson. Two ground outs and a strikeout. the ballpark tonight. Chen Ming Wong goes to work looking for his third win of the season for the Washington Nationals and he'll face this Braves lineup a lineup that has a different look at the top with Bourne and McCann hitting with Jose Constanza in the middle. A lot of speed in those first two spots. Let's see if they can make it work against this veteran Washington righty. Chen Ming Wong is 31 years old 6'3 230 out of Taiwan. He's had six years in the big leagues. This year he was on the DL again and he's been on the DL for the last couple of years with a bad shoulder but he's beginning to come around two and two a 382 ERA didn't pitch too well against the Braves in his second start back on August 3rd but he's improving with each outing. Five innings seven hits six runs against the Braves on August 3rd he got beat six to four. His Ford keys to pitching success tonight. Hello, Hensky. Be careful with Eric because he's got some great numbers against him. And he is on the comeback trail. A guy who's a two time 19 game winner for the Yankees. Now you talk about a low risk, high reward gamble made by Washington and Chin Ming Wong. This guy can make it all the way back. They're going to have themselves a pretty good pitching rotation next year. But he walks Michael Bourne on four pitches. There's a good start. Now the speed immediately in play for the Braves in the first. Well, just like we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast in the uh, in Braves Live, talking about the top guys in the order and the struggle the struggles they've had lately. Braves need to get those guys going. See Constanza's play in which he sprained his ankle against the Cubs. He's had limited action since. Hitting 337. Looks like he went through a whole roll of tape on the bottom of that bat handle. Uh huh. Tape's free in the big leagues. <laughs> Good point. Big lead. 
wanted foul. And no balls, two strikes. Washington's defensive lineup. We mentioned Jason Worth in center field. Nixon Morse flank him in the outfield. Good young double play combination up the middle and Desmond and Espinosa. And Wilson Ramos has a real gun behind the plate and has been tutored by Pudge Rodriguez. He has missed the first two games of this series because he's had food poisoning. He's been sicker than a dog here in Atlanta. So he might be a little weak tonight as he starts game three. Ground ball back to the mound. High throw to second, and that's all Washington will get as Michael Bourne's forced out. And Constanza at first with one man down. Let's see how the Braves play it with Brian McCann up there. His average at 286, looking for his first hit of the series. Costanza running, first move, and he is out by plenty. That wasn't a pitch out, but it served as a pitch out. Fastball up and away, and an easy pitch to catch and throw for Ramos. Good crossover step. Ramos, as you said, with a good arm, nailed him. Let's see the location there. High fly ball, belted right. One nothing. Beat yourself up saying, well, if Constanza hadn't run, this would be a two-run homer. But you can't do that with the team right now. Not the way Constanza and Bourne run and what they do for the offense. That's just one of those where you say, well, didn't work out that time running, but because of Brian's home run. But that's what those guys have to do at the top of the order. Good swing by Brian. Snaps an 0 for 9. We talked in the early comments tonight about the top three hitters for the Braves, hoping they could get going. And McCann certainly has a little flare in the shallow center. Jason Worth handles his first chance cleanly. And the Braves settle for a Brian McCann solo home run with two outs in the first. They lead the game 1 nothing here at Turner Field. Tim Hudson, a 1-0 lead with a solo home run. And 
now Tim goes back to work in the second with Nix Espinosa and Marrero coming up. Nix has had a good year 16 homers 43 knocked in seven hits in his last 16 at bats two of those have left the ballpark. the story with Tim Hudson partner if you don't get him in the first couple of innings you might not get him at all. Yeah his batting average against him really goes down after about the third inning. And that's probably true of just about every sinker ball pitcher a guy who relies on command more than just velocity. First time through the order not bad a little over 250 and then it really dwindles. To Nix, three balls and a strike. And he's aboard with a leadoff walk. And here's Danny Espinosa. 19 homers, 59 RBIs for the Washington Rookie of the Year candidate. But a 229 batting average won't help his cause. He had a horrible slump in June and July. And one for six is he in the series. Acting like that ball hit him. He started to first and then stopped, and now he's limping. Bo Porter's the same thing. He's like, make your argument. Didn't it hit him? Looked like it hit off the left instep. Well, Mark Carlson looked at the baseball, didn't see any shoe polish. Maybe a break for Hudson. Line to short. Throw back to first and not in time. Nick's back safely. Espinoza limps back to the dugout after lining out. There's one of those rockets that's hit Adam. For Tim, that didn't go so good in New York. Look at Alex, who, even though it was hit on a line to him, he was already getting his feet set to make the throw to first. Now, Chris Marrero, the hitter. First round pick in 2006. They have a wealth of good young talent that they're trying to find out here in this last month if it's ready if that talent is ready to play at the big league level so that they can start 2012 ready to go with some of those young guys and Marrero is certainly a key part of it. Steven Strasburg is due back Tuesday to make his return to the big leagues against the Dodgers. And you're talking about that solid starting rotation that sir will include Strasburg. This could be a formidable ball club next year if all these young players are as good as they think they are. Yeah. 
course Bryce Harper is a little bit further down the pipeline for them. Jordan Zimmerman we've seen John Lennon pitch tough against the Braves. They have a very good back into their bullpen. And like Atlanta the chance for Washington to be good and young. Which is the best of all possible worlds. Yeah, Marrero takes strike two on the outside corner. Question is, how much playing time will he get? They've got Adam LaRoche under contract next year. And Morris has shown he can play first base too. Well, that, that's again, they want to know what this young man can do that might dictate what Mike Rizzo tries to do with Adam LaRoche in the o in the offseason. Adam had shoulder surgery. The other question is Dave Johnson going to manage this team next year. Don't know. Two balls, two strikes. When you come up from the minor leagues, you run into some sinker ball pitchers, certainly, and some guys who might have some big league experience. But you really don't know what a good sinker ball pitcher is until you get here who can command both sides of the plate and get you to swing at pitches that in the past you never thought you would swing at. That one bounced off the plate and Alex misjudged it the ball into left field and Nick's on his way to third will make it without a play. First and third one out. It's probably going to be a hit and an error. So I don't think Alex had a play at second base but he took his eye off the ball too soon here. He was already looking at second and then flat out missed it and that allowed Nix to get to third. So we await the scoring while Wilson Ramos gets ready to hit. scored an infield hit. And now 24 year old Wilson Ramos a chance to tie the game for Washington and he's ahead one ball no strikes. Ramos leads the team in double play balls with 17. That's what Tim's looking for here to end the second. Five, four, Three and 18. Around the horn takes care of Ramos and the Nationals in the second. They strand Knicks at third base, and Atlanta protects a 1 0 second inning lead.
stoked on your mind in September. Braves baseball and college football on Fox Sports South. College football Saturday. It kicks off at 3.30. James Madison heads to North Carolina. Everett Withers and his Tar Heels are getting a lot of buzz this week. Then it's 7 o'clock. South Carolina and ECU meet in Charlotte. Join us on Saturday here on Fox Sports South for a full day of college football. When James Madison gets to North Carolina, then what does he do? Is that like a recruiting trip? Not quite sure. His friends call him Jimmy. Chipper Jones will go to work first. Brian McCann's homer, the only run that scored so far tonight. Wilson Ramos just hit into a double play. Let's see if Atlanta can extend Tim Hudson's lead. Chipper said today before the game that the last pitch he saw last night from Rodriguez was the fastest pitch he's ever seen. And it was 101 miles an hour with movement. Fly ball well hit toward left center. Morse going back. That one's going to fly out of here. Four hundred fifty one career homers one behind Carl Yastrzemski on the all time list. And it's a two nothing Braves lead. Say what the old dog is feeling pretty good. He keeps saying he's got his legs under him. He's got a good a good base which allows his legs and hips to help swing the bat a little bit better bat speed and the ball is jumping. And when he's in the ball out to left center, that's a great sign. And Chin Ming Wong, who'd given up just three homers in 33 innings, has given up two in the first inning plus tonight. Braves trying to keep pounding away. And here's Hinsky, the man that's hit him hardest and seen him the most in this starting lineup tonight. To first, Arrow slips, but no difficulty. Chin Ming Wong does his job. One out. Take a look at the home run swing again. They wanted to the pitch down and away, but it was up and away. And he got great extension on it. Got it out front. Great follow through. That's I tell you what. That's vintage Chipper Jones right there. That's a guy with that kind of swing from about five or six years ago. When a hitter makes contact like that and puts his head down a step or so out of the box, he knows it's gone, right? Yes. Morse hit one here the other night, chip into the terrace level in left field. He put his head down. I thought, you know what? You might want to watch this. <laughs> yeah. We don't know where that one's going. So Jason Hayward ahead in the count, batting for the first time tonight. And a ground ball to second. Retired in for the second out. So Chipper now one behind Carl Yastrzemski for a tie for 33rd on the all time list. And 11 behind Jose Canseco. Broke a tie with Jeff Bagwell, who he said was, you know, really in his prime when Chipper came up. He had a lot of admiration for Jeff Bagwell, so he felt like a real accomplishment there to pass him. Jeff, another guy who was really a dominant player in his era and played the game the right way. Made himself a real good defensive first baseman and a big time slugger. How many home runs do you think he lost in the Astrodome before he made his way to Minute Maid Park? Broken bat pop. And Alex will be retired, and that ends the Atlanta second. Solo homers from Brian McCann and Chipper Jones so far tonight. The Braves enjoy. A 2 nothing lead early.
Joe Simpson. Yours truly, Chip Carey, along with the architect of Ball Cub, Frank Wren, the Braves general manager with us. And nice start, huh? A couple of home runs. That's always nice to see. No, that's nice to see. I know Brian McCann was telling me last night he went in after the game and took a bunch of batting practice. And uh, he came in this morning. He said, I found it. He said, you'll see tonight. And he said, I don't want to brag or anything, but he said, I found it. And so <laughs> I think he did. I'd say so. Towering home run to right. And Chipper Jones with a solo shot. As Tim Hudson goes to work in a quick strike to Chin Ming Wong. Busy 48 hours for you again. Yeah, it really was. We're trying to, uh, you know, make some little moves that would enhance our bench. And we think, you know, with the two guys we were able to acquire uh, really fit us well. I mean, they, they, they match what we were needing. And they also fit on this club so well. Obviously, we all know Matt Diaz and what he brings to a ball club, and we're thrilled to have him back. But Jack Wilson's cut out of the same cloth. He's the same kind of guy. He's a baseball player. He's you know, a gamer. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's going to be a perfect fit as well. Have not been able to wipe the smile off uh, Matt Diaz's face since he got here? He's thrilled to be back. Yeah, no, he's, re he's really excited. And, you know, and, and the, the guys are excited. When we, yeah. we, we announced it the other night, they were, they were really pumped. They were, they were excited to see him back. And they know what he can do, you know, especially – you know, he's been such a good uh, performer against left-handed pitching, which has been one of our weaknesses. Chen Meng Wong down on strike, second strike after Tim Hudson in the game. Frank, I said uh, after Brian's home run that, you know, you can sit at home and, and anywhere and beat yourself up thinking, well, if Constanza hadn't gotten thrown out, that'd be a two-run homer. But that's inherent with what the team is right now. You still want those guys running. It's just one of the things that come with the territory. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, you, you can sit back, like you said, and just and, and wait for things to happen, or you can try to make them happen. And I think that's one of the big changes in our club over the last month. And I know Freddie really enjoying managing that type of ball club uh, where you can make some things happen. And we've seen a number of cases over the course of this last month where we've created runs that turned out to be big runs in the, at the end of the game. Ian Desmond bats with the bases empty. And this is quite obviously a different ball club than the one the Phillies saw when we last saw the Philadelphia ball club. Right. Which will be an exciting thing to talk about next week. I, I think one of the things that was interesting is uh, Ed Wade, when we made the deal for Michael Bourne, he said one of the side benefits you'll see is since Michael grew up in the Philadelphia organization, he elevates his game a notch every time we play them. So, you know, that's good to hear as well. And you still are within shouting distance of Philadelphia. Seven and a half back at the start of tonight's play with six games left with the division leading club. No, we, we, we've got, we have games with them, and we feel, you know, we feel like we play uh, very well against them. I wish we played the Washington Nationals as well as we right. play the Phillies. It's, it's, it's one of those things that it's hard to explain. And the other thing, the Phillies have a, you know, you guys have talked about it on the air over the last couple of days. They've got a real tough schedule in, in September now with the makeup of rainouts and so forth. And they play us three next week, and then they go right to Milwaukee for four. Desmond shoots one over Bourne's glove, and that one bounces high off the fence. And Ian Desmond doubles with one out in the Washington third. We've been talking about this Washington club a lot too, Frank, and about how they're on the verge of really putting together a real solid and young ball club if they can figure out some of these pieces like Marrero if they're going to fit for next year. No, they they – they scare you. I mean, yeah. they, they have a lot of guys that can drive the baseball, and, and they're, they're putting pieces together, like you say. And just, you know, you, you can't put it all together at once. And I think over the last couple of years, they've accumulated a lot of nice pieces that are starting to form a good baseball club. And Steven Strasburg, we mentioned coming back Tuesday. Glad we don't have to face him. I know the Braves will be up for the challenge, but it's good for baseball to have young players like that come back and perform. Right. I mean, they're, they're obviously last year was such a rage. Everybody wanted to come see him pitch. And. We had a huge spike in our attendance when he pitched here and everywhere else that he, he performed. And, and, and it is great to have those young guys. But you know, I, I prefer to be in another division. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is he's, he's a special talent. Let's talk about our starting staff. Uh, obviously, you've got the Tommy Hansen situation. And I guess bad news tonight with Jair Jurgens. He's going to get his knee checked out again, huh? Yeah, his knee, he threw his side session today. And it just didn't feel quite right. It's still not you know, uh, feeling as, as good as he would hope. And so he's going to see Dr. Stedman out in, in, Arizona, out in uh, Colorado uh, just for a second opinion. And, you know, our doctors they feel very confident that, you know, we, we know exactly what's going on in there. But uh, uh, he's going to fly out there for the second opinion, and then we'll have a, 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 the next idea of what to do next. Uh, but, you know, that's not great news for us because the pitching is what carried us in the first half. It's what was so important with our ball club. Um, but I do think we have depth, and our young kids have come up and performed very well. So we'll probably have to use one of them. Uh, on Sunday. 
Well, he was certainly under the watchful eye of a lot of people today in his side session. They were trying some different things with him today just to see if, uh, you know, see if a knee brace would help him. Uh, and it didn't seem to uh, make a difference for, for what he, you know, where the ailment is in the, in the side of that knee. And obviously you want him right. I mean, you, you can't send him out there, nor should he go out there if he's not 100%, right? No, exactly. I mean, he's, he, we saw what he could do in the first half when he was pitching uh, on two good legs, and, and it just hasn't been the same since, since the knee injury in the middle of the season. And, and we're, you know, we're in the process now of trying to figure out exactly if and when he can come back this year. And so that's, that's the next step for us. And Tommy Hansen, uh, what's the latest on Tommy? I know his initial examination seemed to be a positive development, but he's still not pitching. Yeah, he's, he's starting to throw now, which that's the good thing. He's, 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 we'll start that progression. We, we feel like we have a good chance of getting him back before the end of the year. So I think on a, with a negative note with Jair, but the positive note with Tommy, we feel like there's a, there's a decent window to get him back and you know, if we make it the postseason, hopefully have him there. You said uh, all winter long that you can't have enough pitching, you know, and that, that the Braves are blessed with uh, solid starting depth, which you have. And certainly when you enter September with a couple of your starters hurting, it certainly doesn't come, become more evident than right now when you can, you're can you going to need a couple of guys. Yeah, it's not ideal. It's not, you know, it's not the way we would draw it up. And, you know, fortunately we've played well enough throughout the first five months to have a, a, a nice lead, uh, and it allow us to give some of the kids, you know, some – Double play ball. And yeah. the Braves turn it. Uh, we keep getting those double play balls. That's pretty nice. But it'll give us a chance to pitch the young kids and get their feet wet and get them stabilized at the big league level. And we may need them in October. Can you stick around another half inning? Sure. Good. A general manager's best friend. The around the horn double play ends the Washington third. started offensively for Atlanta and Washington's already made a defensive substitution on this lovely night. Rick and Keel has taken over for the Nationals. He's in right field. Former Brave taking the place of Knicks. Knicks uh, was walking off something after that ball bounced over Alex's head and allowed him to go to third on that chopper that Marrero hit. I don't know if he hit the bag funny when he went into third or if he hit second rounding it funny. But he was, he had something go wrong on that trip to third base. So here's Tim Hudson. And he'll roll one toward third. Zimmerman loves to throw that way. And he makes a fine play to retire the Braves pitcher. Something Washington fellas had a little trouble doing last night with Derek Lowe in the batter's box. I tell you, he was uh, all smiles last night in the clubhouse. <laughs> I mean, it's first he said, you know, as you guys know, it's the first time he's ever hit a ball out of the park in his life. 
Uh, and to do it at 38 in the big league is something. He was very talkative in the dugout tonight, which I know is a big surprise, <laughs> about joining Randy Johnson and Preacher Rowe as the only guys at that age since 1900. Right. I said, well, we can start calling you Preacher Low if you like. <laughs> Michael Bourne bats with the bases empty. Braves up two. McCann and Chipper have gone deep. And here is that Geico quote of the day. Derek Lowe says that's the first ball I've hit over a fence in 38 years of existence. I'm not going to lie to you. That was fun. I don't even honest to God remember running around the bases. <laughs> that's the way it ought to be. Euphoric. It looked like he was talking to it as he went to first base. Last oh, night. yeah. He was Get out of here. Get out of here. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it did. And Derek Lowe, Frank, has really seemingly turned it around again here in his last four or five starts. He really has. It's been, it's been great to see because, you know, he's such an important part of our rotation because uh, he gives us that guy that can sink it and, and hopefully get a little deeper into games. And if he, if he does that like he did in September last year, it makes a huge difference for us. Well, especially as you get closer to postseason and the, and the likelihood of postseason when you you got Hudson who's pitched so great in the second half. And then you have if you have Derek come back, that's your two veteran guys ready to go. Beachy's been really good, but mm -hmm. at least if you know you got your two veterans on a, on a good Roll going into postseason, you feel good. Yeah, it sets us up, and, and then you know if we can hopefully get Hanson back, that adds another guy that's been through it, that we have a lot of confidence in, and you don't put as much pressure on the kids. And, and you know, I think Mike Miner has really, yeah, he really looks like he feels comfortable at the big league level now. He's a different look in his eye, and, and when he goes to the mound, he's making a lot of quality pitches, and I think you know that's been a, a real pleasant surprise and, and great development for us here in the second half. One of the subjects we talked about in the open, Frank, was Craig Kimbrell. I think you could use those terms to talk about him and his record-setting year as well. No question. He's, you know, early in the season, we had to be a little patient with him, and Freddie showed great patience and kept him in that role when he had some struggles, and uh, it's really paid off because he's as dominant as it gets right now. Do you think he'd be this good this early? No, I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody can, you know, guess that. I, we thought he had closer mentality and closer stuff, and that doesn't always equate to a closer. But it, it, it usually has a pretty good chance, and he's he's really done a terrific job. And whatever lessons Billy Wagner taught him last year, I think we're reaping the benefits of that. I know we talked about that a lot last season, the importance of Billy Wagner to this franchise going forward. I, I don't disagree at all. I think I think it made a big impact on both he and Johnny Venters. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a guy that's sat out there and, and done that job for the number of years Billy did it. And you're going to have days when you fail, and you're going to have days when you're great, and you've got to be able to put the put both of them behind you and go out tonight. Well, Frank, always a pleasure to visit with you. Congratulations on your two newest acquisitions, and uh, let's enjoy this final month of September. All right, guys, thank you. General Manager Thanks, Frank. Frank Wren visiting with us at the ballpark, Braves by two.
Atlanta in front. Tim Hudson's gotten a couple of double play balls that have helped him to this good start. And attention, ladies, get together with your girlfriends tomorrow night at Turner Field for Girls' Night Out, presented by Wellstar Health System. Get discounted game tickets, plus a Girls' Night Out t-shirt, a feather boa, pregame patio party, and more. Visit braves.com slash girls' night today. Michael Morse, first pitch swinging, drives one to right. He's a big moose, isn't he? You bet. Right groin strain, we're told, on Lance Nix and why he came out of the game. Listed his day to day. That means Rick Ann Keel bats in his spot and hits with one out here in the fourth inning. Seven homers, 28 knocked in for Ann Keel. He's reunited with his former minor league hitting coach, Rick Eckstein, brother of former big leaguer David. Rick was the Memphis hitting coach when Ann Keel went back down to the minor leagues and converted from pitching to outfield. Conscientious guy right there. He's got his notebook with him and making notes every pitch. Rio swinging and and Keel flies to left. Tim Hudson will take that two outs very quickly. Braves baseball on Fox Sports South brought to you by Miller High Life. This summer find out how giving back bottle caps can give returning vets a piece of a high life. Go to MillerHighLife.com for details. Started in for a called strike. Spinoza lined out to short his first time up. He's got a six game hitting streak working tonight. Hinsky's got it. Easy inning for Tim Hudson. What did we say? If you don't get him early, you might not get him at all. That could be very good news for the Braves, who lead 2 0. Brian McCann has Homer tonight. Let's see if he can do it again when we return to Atlanta after this.
Ryan McCann's gone deep tonight, his 23rd of the season. And he'll start off against Chen Ming Wong. And the Nationals right hander pitched real well in his last handful of starts. He's won two straight decisions, covering a month's worth of play since he last saw Atlanta. And trying to go to three and two on the year. Trails two nothing here tonight. He's given up a bunch of unearned runs, so his defense has been very porous. 23 runs, 14, they get 16 earned. Game against Atlanta, he had four unearned runs. Yeah. Tim Hudson's given up a lot of unearned runs, the most of any of the starters, nine. And four of those have been to Washington. The thing that Brian talked about after that game in Chicago where he had such a big day was that he had begun to let the ball come out of the pitcher's hand. He wasn't trying to hit it right out of his hand. See it and then react. And if you can do that, and if you can trust your hands to work and just react to the pitch, then you're not going to swing as many at as many bad pitches. There, but he didn't get the call. Sherwood Williams paint the corners, did he? Nope, missed. Ground ball to second. Chin Ming Wong is right. He gets a lot of outs that way. He's got a very heavy sinking fastball. He's retired the last seven Braves hitters he's faced. His fastball is 90 to 94 with good sinking action. He cuts it a little bit. But when he was with the Yankees and winning 19 games a year, he was 95 96. And hitters talked about how it felt like they were hitting a bowling ball because it had such good heavy sink. He's also got a slider and a split change up. There's the slider. Well, if velocity comes from the shoulder, it's not surprising. It's the right shoulder that was surgically repaired for Chin Ming Wong. It's cost him two years in the big leagues trying to come back. And quickly 0 2 to Dan Ugla. And yes, it does look like there are times where he goes into his wind up and then decides if he's really going to throw this pitch <laughs> or not. You are two balls, two strikes. I think they ought to give me a switch up here where I just hit green <laughs> or red, you know, and just have the umpires look up here. Joe, did he go? I like it. Yeah. Oracle is never wrong, right? I'll be fair. I'll be fair. Chippers next. Ugla reaches that snaps Chin Meng Wong's successful streak of seven straight retired. He's a from Chipper. And time for the Coors Light. Cold hard blast comes off the bat of Chipper. 
left center field. We've seen him hit balls that way a lot left handed and when he's doing that he is locked in. A bunch of guys have caught on to Chipper's signal too for sign for I think it's I love you isn't it? Uh, for sign language when he does that and he always waves that to the crowd when he's in the on deck circle or as he's coming back through the on deck circle. Now the players are doing it to him. Just missed. See, that's what Chipper does after 451 of them. Martin was joining in, so have several of his teammates. Here's where Chipper ranks on the all time home run tote board. He says his grandfather's favorite player is Carl Yastrzemski, so he said he's not sure how that's going to be received if he ties and passes Yaz. Off the plate. Guerrero's got it. And two men are out. That's got to be one of the, maybe the, the best thing about being at the advanced stage of your professional career when you start amassing the numbers that Chipper Jones has piled up over the course of his career. The names you start to pass and start to mingle with. Start talking about Eddie Murray and Carl Yastrzemski and guys like that. Just remarkable. People that you heard about or got to see play as a young man. Got to make you feel pretty proud to be mentioned in the same breath with those people. With his home run tonight. This Chipper's 24 home runs away from tying Stan Musial. The all time. Great hitters in baseball history. St. Louis Cardinals star. Willie Stargell at 475 as well. Willie Stargell so instrumental in the development of Chipper Jones as a young player. As Hinsky lines one in the right field for a clean hit. Ugly around third. He's going to score with two outs. And Hinsky continues his good work against Chin Ming Wong and extends the Atlanta lead to three. Love those two out RBI knocks and Wong made a mistake upstairs. You do that to Eric Hensky, especially on a fastball. You're asking for trouble. 28th RBI. And a 3 nothing lead. Ugly walk, the chipper ground out, and the Hinsky single. Al Hayward takes one back up the middle. That had some zip on it coming back, didn't it? Yeah, I'm just glad that wasn't hit right back at Wong because he was de practically defenseless. One hit that hard. Half-heartedly stuck his glove out there, but fortunately it wasn't right back at him. And that pitch was up. And good to see Jason hit the ball back through the middle. Alex Gonzalez, the sixth man to bat in the inning. He popped out in the second. Try to win the series against Washington. Take a one game lead in the season series over Washington. Trying to keep pace with the Phillies in the East. And a line drive again to short. This one caught by Desmond. And that'll retire the side. Braves score a run on two hits and lead by three as we head to the fifth inning.
by Delta Airlines, and by Ford. Fifth inning, 3 nothing. Tim Hudson enjoys the lead. Nice crowd here at the ballpark. Atlanta will face the lower third for the Nationals. Guerrero, Ramos, and Chen Ming Wong schedule. Field hit for Marrero, who hit 300 this year at AAA for Washington. And off to a 333 start in the big leagues. Nationals have a very favorable last month of September after tonight they go home. They've only got 10 road games the rest of the month, all in the division. Strikeout number three for Hudson. One out. We've seen this from Tim before. We've seen this from Derek Lowe before. The guys who really rely so much on command that, you know, you give them a few runs to work with where they know they can afford to make a mistake, and boy, do they start slicing and dicing guys and really working the corners. Love to see that pitch count. Okay. As we showed you early, the first three innings are the most problematic for Hudson. After that, he settles in very nicely. You see that his ERA goes up a little bit later in the ball game, and that is, uh, you'd say, well, he's probably not, hasn't pitched that much late in the ball game from the seventh inning on, but that's not true. He's actually pitched in the seventh inning or later in nine of his last ten starts. And the only interruption was his last start. And he went six and a third against the Mets. And I wonder how much of that skewed by the first half of the season. I mean, the last 10, 12 starts, Tim's been one of the best pitchers in baseball. As that one slicing away from Bourne and will hop to the base of the wall. It'll stick there. And Ramos doubles with one out on an 0-2 pitch. Well, everything was going so well until he tried to drop down. And Tim tried to invent something there on the right hand a hitter and left one right out over the plate. You can see him do this very often, but side armor and the slider, and it just stayed right there. And Ramos got a good look at it. So runner at second for Chin Ming Wong. Three nothing Atlanta the lead. We're in the fifth. Yes, he did. <laughs> Didn't need a button for that one, though. He's hit loose for the year. And for 11 with five strikeouts, Hudson got him swinging in the third. This guy's listed at 6'3, 230. And he looks a whole lot trimmer than that. Brian McCann is listed at 6'3, 230. So you can compare the two, and somebody's scale's different. I like Brian's scale better. <laughs> two strikes. Yeah, I think Brian's a good solid 230. Right? Jim Wong looks a lot thinner than that. Might be the uniform that fools us, though. Polish him off, Tim. He's 0 for 11. Yeah. 
Fourth strikeout. And the top of the order with two outs for Washington. Register today for the 2011 Braves postseason pre sale event. Braves postseason tickets go on sale Monday, September 12th, but you can be one of the first to secure tickets to all 2011 Braves postseason home games just by registering online at Braves.com slash postseason. You know, the rosters were expanded today, Chip, so that means the Braves could add guys to their roster, and it, must, it wasn't wasted on Eddie Perez. I mean, before the pitcher started hitting today, he was taking some swings in the cage and putting some balls in the seats. Well, a few. I'm not sure that Eddie's planning a comeback, but the rosters, I mean, there's room. Oh, look at Terry throwing him a changeup. That's not fair. How many, how many did he hit out? Uh, a couple. More than more than just a couple or three. Yeah, he did. One of those, you know, I'm here if you need me. <laughs> Desmond ahead in the count. One ball, no strikes. We mentioned that J.C. Boscan is with the ball club. He's been added to the roster, and Anthony Varvaro has been recalled as well to add a little depth to the bullpen. There will be some other call-ups, but not until the minor league season's in, at least for Gwinnett, and they're in a playoff hunt. And the Braves didn't want to decimate their roster. Let those guys have a chance to finish off their series. See what Mauro Gomez did yesterday. They won 11 to 2. Gwinnett did against Norfolk. He was uh, he had two homers, a triple, and eight RBIs, and was the Player of the Week last week. Wow! In the International League. Broken bat, ground ball. Chipper's got that. Desmond and Washington retired in the fifth. The Nats have stranded four men in the game. Hudson 12 and three lifetime against Washington and leads again tonight. We also welcome you to the month of September. That's right, it's September 1st. That means the Braves playoff pushes on and college football is underway. And it's the biggest college football season ever on Fox Sports South and on Sports South as well. This Saturday, college football Saturday finally kicks off. Over on Sports South, we've got Miami of Ohio at Missouri at noon. UCLA plays at Houston at 3.30. And then at 10 o'clock, Louisiana Tech faces Southern Miss. It's a great lineup. You wanna, you're going to want to be with us all day Saturday on Sports South. That guy there with the Oregon Duck shirt on. Liner to third off the bat of Tim Hudson. And that's out number one. Guy's a long way from home, but sporting his team colors. They're really good this year. In fact, they're rated second. Who do they open up with? 
Don't they have a game at? Uh, I don't know, but they're second. Oh, they're second. Um, yes. Yeah, open up with LSU. LSU, but they're but LSU's not first, are no. they? No, no, no. We'll have Dave Baker look it up for us. Who's number one? Oregon's number two. Ranked number two. I'm trying to figure out who's number who's one. Who's number one? <laughs> Dave's asked coaches poll or academic poll. <laughs> well, in the coaches poll, I think Joe's going to like the answer a whole lot more. <laughs> I think that would be the Oklahomans, correct? It would be. Georgia Tech's playing tonight. They're off to a flying start, we understand. Bulldogs kick off this weekend against Boise State over at the Georgia Dome. Big sports weekend here in Atlanta. Hope you'll make your plans to join us for the Dodgers this weekend. Slow roller, tough play. Infield hit. Love to see that. Snap an 0 for 8 for Michael Bourne, and perfect way to do it with an infield hit. Man, watch it go. No chance at all for Desmond. That's Michael's fifth infield hit since joining the Braves. I like what Frank said that he learned from Ed Wade with regard to Michael Bourne going back against the Phillies. That's true for a lot of guys, though. They go back and play against their old clubs, and they seem to elevate it, elevate everything. 162 hits for Michael now. That's 11 behind the Cubs' Starlin Castro for the National League lead. And Constanza dances out of the way of ball one. Braves have played the Phillies very tough. Again, we're not looking past Los Angeles. But I'll be very interested to see how differently Philadelphia approaches this Braves offense with the speed that's been added at the deadline. I think it's safe to say, Joe, that adding Hunter Pence was a great acquisition for the Phillies, but very little difference whether it's Pence or Jason Worth. And the Braves have seen the Phillies when they had Jason Worth in their lineup. That's a good point. Bouncing ball. That's all Washington gets. The speed of Constanza keeps the inning alive and it allows Brian McCann to hit. Now with two out. Better not look past the Dodgers. They haven't had a whole lot working this year, but they can score. <laughs> Michael in his second base and just kind of came to a halt. Plus, the Dodgers can run some good pitchers at you, too. And they're raised with see Billingsley. I'm not sure how to pronounce this rookie's name. Yovaldi. I'll go with that for the moment. Who's supposed to have a terrific arm throw real hard. And then Clayton Kershaw on Sunday. Dodgers are 9 and 1 in their last 10 games, so got to pay attention. One ball, no strikes to Brian McCann. And that's a Dodger team that. Some say features the Cy Young candidate Clayton Kershaw and Matt Kemp having an MVP caliber year for Los Angeles. And they've got Loney and they've got Ethier and they've got Carroll. They've got a lot of good players. It's been a down year for the Dodgers in almost every conceivable manner. LA will come to town 12 games out of first place in the National League West. Good swing. There's another one in the first inning. Came right after Jose Constanza had been thrown out trying to steal. And if you were with us when Frank Wren joined us, talking about how Brian stayed after the game last night to hit some more and try to work something out, said he figured out what it was and sure paid off in the first inning. Ah. 
Ladder high fastball evens the count. Fly ball center field pretty well hit but not deep enough worth on the warning track calls it in and that retires the Braves in the fifth Atlanta three Washington nothing. Sherwood Williams by the Georgia Lottery, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and by Chase. Joe and Chip back with you. We are through five. Tim Hudson pitching beautiful baseball tonight. He scattered four hits. He's gotten a couple of double play balls and a couple of home runs, too. One from Chipper, one from Brian McCann. And an Eric Hinsky two out run scoring single has given him a three run lead. Here in the sixth, they'll face Jason Worth, Ryan Zimmerman, and Michael Morse. Top fly foul and strike one. Jason Worth is a tall, lean guy with long arms, but a short swing. Unlike Morse, who's got kind of a big, long, powerful swing, Jason's is short and has a real short finish. He keeps both hands on the bat. Down the right field line, slicing away from Jason, slides to a stop in the corner. It's a foul ball. And two strikes to Worth. Boy, Jason covered a lot of ground, made that a close play. Watch the swing from Worth, and, and notice first of all that he keeps both hands on the bat, but he doesn't really have a big finish follow through. See how it stopped right there, but it's still great bat speed and very powerful. He doesn't have to twist himself in the ground to generate bat speed like so many other guys. I saw you looking. High fly ball. Watch Talk about one. generation. Way out of here to left. Seventeenth home run, and the Nationals are on the board. He put his head down, but as I said, he can deserves to watch that one. O2 pitch. Pitch was supposed to be away and it rode up and in and he does such an excellent job of keeping his hands inside the baseball. 
to get the barrel of the bat to the ball, and you can see Brian McCann's reaction immediately. And again, both hands, short finish, very Mike Schmidt like. Well said. Here's Zimmerman, strike one. A majestic home run from Jason Worth makes it a 3 1 game. Line drive to right for the first down. Trivia time at the ballpark. Our AT&T Universe TV trivia question. Well, I hope you can fill the shoes of a guy that was pretty stellar was last he? night. Yeah. Well, you or Tommy? Not me. Tommy, huh? Ryan Zimmerman's 20 homers tied a Washington Montreal rookie record. Who did he tie? My first reaction is the big cat, Andre Scalarabo. It's usually the right answer. The first guess. Well, they had some great rookies come up through the Montreal. Andre Dawson, Alice Valentine, Leon Cromartie, Tim Wallach, guys like that. Gary Carter. Jamie Carroll. Well, I mean, okay. No balls and a strike. Little tapper. Tim with a bare hand. Momentary bobble. But no trouble. Morse is out number two. Get your tickets now to see the Rock Legends Sticks perform a free post-game concert. That's presented by Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines following the Braves and Mets Saturday, September 17th. Get your tickets and VIP field passes today at Braves.com slash sticks with a Y and an X. I know our producer Joe Vincius thinks they're just about the best group in the world. He starts every production meeting with an acapella version of Mr. Roboto. Mm -hmm. to Rick and Keel. And Keel came on when Nick's injured a groin in the early innings tonight. And that's what Pitchers like to do to Rick, and we saw it a lot last year. Is that when they get ahead of him in the count, is to go upstairs. He has a hard time laying off the fastball above the letters. But you better get it up, or he will take it out. Two and two. Swing and a miss retires the side, but not before Jason Worth says Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, a solo home run. 3-1 is your score as we head to the bottom of inning number six.
screen. Line drive by Alex Gonzalez. And Desmond had to go up the ladder to get it. Jump. And he got up there high enough to save a run. Nice play by the Nats shortstop. That was Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. So Dan Ugla leads off the sixth. And strike one. That's past third, and Zimmerman upset he couldn't glove it. And Ugla doubles to lead off the sixth inning. His 19th two base hit. And he's got a five game hitting streak working. Came close to getting one down the line on the first swing. And successful here. I guess the guy, it's hard to hit the ball by, and that's Zimmerman. But a chance for the Braves to get that run back after the home run by Worth in the top of the inning. And at the very least, Chipper will try to get Uglo to third base. He's homered and he's bounced out to first tonight. Dangerous hitter in the box, a dangerous hitter on deck. Arakinski, our Delta Airlines on deck hitter. And already with an RBI hit tonight against Chin Ming Wong. Both you and Frank Wren said it was vintage Chipper Jones with that second inning home run. Can't you see a lot of those in your mind's eye? Mm -hmm. Little flare into shallow left center, but Worth with those long legs, a terrific jump. And makes the play for the first out. Chipper can't advance Ugla. One game does not a season make, but you can do a whole lot worse than Jason Worth every day in center, huh? That's been a spot for them that they've been trying to fill. They were trying to make a deal right before the deadline to get somebody there. They were trying to get a couple of different guys. Yeah, there was rumors that they were after B.J. Upton. They've tried Roger Bernardino out there. They've used Ann Keel out there. And Ann Keel's a very good center fielder. He sure. just needs to hit more to stay out there on a daily basis and has trouble against lefties. And just think about, as we've said, the dangerous nature of this Washington club, an outfield that could have Morse, Worth, and Bryce Harper. I don't know if Bryce Harper is any good or not, but ultimately we'll find out. I know that. Yeah. 2 0 the count to Hinsky. And Eric getting the start because of his good work against Chin Ming Wong. But Freddie Freeman's had a quadriceps problem. We saw evidence of that in Chicago when we played the Cubs. Yeah, I thought the three days off would really do a lot for that quad issue for Freeman, but going to need another day, maybe two. Strike Kinski not sure about that call. Three balls and a strike. Sherwood Williams painting the corners. That wasn't in the same area code. Mercy. That'd be a red button, right? Yeah, I mean you, you're gonna need a roller to paint <laughs> that corner. And almost in the same spot, but this one called ball four. So first and second, one out. And not the same place. 
And as an umpire told me one time, I said that called one a ball, he called one a strike. I said that was the same place. He goes, well, good, I didn't miss them both. <laughs> that makes you feel good. <laughs> well, good point. Yeah. Not much you can say. Hayward grounds towards short. A little flip to second is all the Nationals get. They force Eric Hinsky, and the Braves have runners at the corners now. And two outs, and the eighth place hitter, Alex Gonzalez, in the batter's box. That was almost a sweet base hit right there for Jason. Even looked like he might have been trying to go that way because Desmond was playing so far up the middle. Good approach. Pitch was down and away, hit it that way, and look where Desmond was playing. Just another foot or so to the left, and he might have had a base hit and an RBI. Let's see how carefully Washington pitches Alex. Pitcher do next. Strike one. John Burnett, one of two lefties in their bullpen, getting to loosen up. And now one and two. In. He, he looked like on the pitch that he took for a ball inside that he was beginning to look for it in because he actually kind of stepped in the bucket a little bit. Let's see if they stay in there. to loosen up for Atlanta as does Arodis Viscaino. If Alex reaches we might see a pinch hitter for Hudson. Alex wearing out that left field foul line here in the Atlanta sixth. So Brooks Conrad. Stretching and loosening up. Don't know if Jack Wilson is in the ballpark or in uniform. I expected him to be here about game time, but that's a long day of flying from Seattle to oh. Atlanta. Line drive left and a base hit. Another two out run scoring play. This one off the bat of Alex Gonzalez. That was a great reaction, too, by Alex after fighting off all those pitches and pulling them foul. Gets a broken bat hit and drives in a run. But watch this. Yeah. Can't rob me on that one. He gets that run back. Hudson gave up on the home run in the sixth. Top of the sixth. 
So three of the Braves four runs tonight have come with two outs and Tim Hudson all the way to home plate. Gets word now that he will be taken down for a pinch hitter. Atlanta leading 4 1. A chance to save some pitches and some innings for Tim Hudson tonight, it appears. And that does mean something. Maybe not tonight, but it might about September 20th. Save an inning. 86 pitches for him tonight. But it is apparent that he wanted to stay in the game. Chen Ming Wong will be taken down as well by national skipper Davey Johnson. Braves enjoy a 4 1 lead. By Toyota. 4 1 game. Joe and Chip back with you. Tim Hudson wanted to stay in the stay in the game and swing the bat at the very least. But he'll be taken down after six innings of one run baseball tonight. And he will give way to Matt Diaz, who will come on and pinch hit. Dave was Brooks Conrad announced. So Brooks Conrad was announced and is also scratched off the lineup card. And what a happy homecoming it was for Matt last night. Yeah, two hits last night. I said, gosh, what if you'd had to play in back to back games? He said, I'd have been so sore at the end of tonight that I wouldn't have been able to walk. <laughs> and that top statistical line is one reason why the Braves brought Matt Diaz back. And he's facing. A tough lefty in Sean Burnett for the Nationals. And we've seen this before. He'll take a couple of wild swings, get to two strikes, and then hit a laser at somebody. Sean Burnett's in his 60th game, a 431 ERA. A lot of decisions, too, out of the bullpen. And four saves on top of that. Six home runs allowed, 262 average. It's happened before, but it is rare in this day and age to see a player sign a contract someplace else and then come back to his previous ball club. That's the case for Matty Diaz. Got a chance for a two year contract with the Pirates. And Braves acquired him for a player to be named later. Got some cash in the deal as well, and Matt's under contract for next season, too. John Burnett, a former pirate. One of the
those guys that came along all about the same time for Pittsburgh that they thought they were going to have a solid young gun type pitching staff. But injuries cut into that. And in some cases, ineffectiveness. Burnett throws hard. He's 90 to 93 of this fastball. It's kind of a slurvy breaking ball that leads to right handers. He likes to drop in on their back foot. You like their bullpen? I like Storen and Clifford. Hard not to like those two guys. Their bullpen, 24 wins, 19 losses this year. Very, very good ERA. Sorry, Chip, when you can run a guy out there down a couple of runs. And you need somebody just to hold them. And you can run a guy out there like Henry Rodriguez throwing 100 miles an hour. That's not too bad either. So again, another reason why the Nationals will be a very dangerous foe in the years to come. Braves, though, lead them tonight 4-1, trying to win the series and take two out of three tonight. And a letter high fastball strikes out Diaz. And that retires the side. The Braves, though, pick up their third two out run in this game. They have four in total and lead 4 1 heading to the seventh. For sure, the Braves have a couple of home runs, and they lead the Nationals by a 4-1 score after six innings of play. I know you love it when you see more of those Braves faces. Yeah, that's good right there. Got to like that 3-1, to one, and it's a 4-1 to one score, so it's almost balanced out. But two solo homers and two clutch RBI singles. Good hitting tonight by the Braves to give Tim Hudson the lead that he'll turn over to the bullpen. Danny Espinosa takes ball one from the man that answers our AT&T call to the bullpen. That's Eric O'Flaherty. Worked the seventh last night after the home run by Morse. He came in in relief of Derek Lowe. Got a one two three with a strikeout. And he's off to a good start in the seventh inning. The Braves made another defensive change. You see big first baseman Freddie Freeman check in. The Atlanta changes straight up. Flaherty bats ninth. Freeman bats in Eric Hinsky's spot. That's sixth. You mentioned earlier your chat with Bob Brenly, the longtime broadcaster with the Cubs, former manager of the Diamondbacks. 
I imagine his praise of this Braves ball club heavily featured the advantage that they have over every team in baseball, I think, and that's the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings out of the bullpen. That's what everybody talks about, and that's what scouts talk about, and we've said that before that they have commented time and again that. Ground ball to short. Herrero is an easy out. Nobody has what the Braves have at the end of the ball game. Jack Wilson's here. Having a chat with Eric Kinski. Braves got him from Seattle. And in a lot of ball games, he knows how to play. Solid, if not spectacular, hitter, but a Silver Slugger Award winner at one point in his career and an All Star. And in August, hit 324 for the Mariners. He was coming on strong. He's actually on the disabled list and will be active tomorrow. He's had a sore heel that was bothering him. And he can play second, he can play short. And in a pinch, could probably play a little third base if you needed him to. And these moves that Frank Wren and the Braves engineered after the trading deadline seem like such minor moves, but how many times have we seen in playoff action, again, assuming the Braves get there, that those unheralded acquisitions make big contributions in postseason play? Guys hungry for the postseason. In many cases, like Matt and Certainly for Jack Wilson, you come from a ball club that's not going anywhere. And in his case, a last place team, 18 games out to a team that's got a real good shot of getting into the postseason. You're fired up to do whatever you can to help. And Jack's never been in the postseason. One ball, two strikes to Ramos. And again, back foul out of play. Great thing about being traded to Atlanta, and it's always been this way, at least in the 20 years I've been here. You come from outside the organization, you get welcomed in right away. There's no real transition period where you're kind of feeling your way into the team, trying to get to know the guys. They make you know them right away. They and help you. No, hey, you're the new guy. You no, know, there's none of that. There is, hey, you know, play hard and, uh, Wear the uniform right, as, as they used to say about Bobby Cox, be on time. And you got it all, you got it all mastered. Well, Flaherty works a perfect seventh. Stretch time at Turner Field. Braves enjoy a 4 1 lead on a perfect night for baseball.
It's September. That means the pennant races continue, and it's college football time. On Fox Sports South, college football Saturday kicks off at 3.30. The Dukes of James Madison head to North Carolina. Everett Withers and his Tar Heels are getting a lot of buzz this week. Then at 7 o'clock, South Carolina and ECU meet in Charlotte. Join us Saturday here on Fox Sports South for a full day of college football. Big day. Season getting started tonight. Top of the Atlanta order will greet Burnett, Bourne, Constanza, and Brian McCann. As you can see from his delivery, Burnett really throws across his body, too. He kind of steps to the first baseline. Makes it a little harder on the lefties to pick up the pitch. real great races to speak of at this point in the National League every race coming into play tonight at least six games or more between first and second in the divisions and in the wild card as well yeah that Western division there's some separation in a hurry when the Diamondbacks jumped out and have won nine in a row Ball at first. And in the upper deck, a big contingent of Georgia Bulldog fans making some noise tonight. Pretty big weekend for them to come over, catch a Braves game, go to their football game tomorrow night. Got the Braves gear on tonight, too. Wow. That get him. He came up off the plate, hit him somewhere. One of the arms, it looked like. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball to second. Horn is retired for out number one. Bring your best friend to the game this Sunday, September 4th, for the final Braves Bark in the Park of the season. Bark in the Park tickets are $25 each. They include one dog ticket and one human ticket. Quantities are limited, so order today at Braves.com slash bark. What's your dog's name? Stinker Bell. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. Yes. You obviously didn't take any law classes, did you? <laughs> don't ask a question you don't already know the answer uh, to. I knew it. I've forgotten. Yeah, with good reason. Little tiny nine pound dog. A little fly ball towards short. And an easy play retires Constanza for the second out. You're not bringing the canines on Sunday? No, that'll, that would not be. That would not be a good thing. No? I'm working. It'd be hard to keep control of Georgia and Sugar Bean. What kind of beasts are these? Lab and a Maltese. Please tell me the lab is not sugar bean. No, she's not. That's a little joke. Okay. If you're a lab and you have that kind of name, you're just hanging your head. Looking for a new home, mostly. <laughs> Pretty good chance. Two 
Two strikes to Brian. He's had a nice night tonight. He hit his 23rd home run. He came with two outs in the first inning. Yeah, his career high is 24, and that came in his first full year. He's already surpassed last year's total of 21. So certainly an excellent chance of setting a new career high with a month to go. Braves actually counting tonight have 27 games left 13 at home 14 on the road. And of those 27 games left 21 are against the National League East which is the way it ought to be mm -hmm. in your own division. Finish the season the only games outside the division are the three coming up with the Dodgers and the three at the end of the next road trip in St. Louis. And don't forget we make up that two games left with the Mets a double header on the eighth. In between that Philadelphia and St. Louis trip. <laughs> Phillies already won tonight. Vance Worley went to 10 and 1. They beat the Reds again. 6 4 was that final score. The Braves hoping to keep pace tonight. Braves start play seven and a half, excuse me, seven and a half games behind the Phillies for the division lead. Yeah, but again, uh, the Phillies had a big lead in that ball game, and their bullpen gave up four late. And a three run pinch hit homer by Chris Heisey late in that ball game to make it close. What an at bat. Great at bat. Brian coaxes a two out walk, and that'll bring up Ugla. And it'll bring Davy Johnson out of the Nationals dugout. He will not allow Burnett to face Ugla down three runs. Burnett goes an inning with a strikeout and a walk. He'll give way to a bullpen mates. 4-1 Atlanta leads. Our seventh inning continues in a moment. Board with two outs in the last of the seventh inning. Boy, when you call in Todd Coffee, speaking of hot coffee, he wants to get in there before Davy Johnson changes his mind. And then I'd make room just in I case. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> you, you could turn into some bowling pins real fast. Yes. If, if something bad happened going up that slope. Pretty good year for the former Cincinnati Red. A lot of ball games. Not too many walks, 240 average, only four homers allowed.
Todd out of Forest City, North Carolina. Might have friends and family at the park tonight. Certainly watching as he delivers ball one to Dan Ugly. Two more runs scored for Dan tonight. He's walked and he's doubled. Coffee throws hard. He's 92 to 94. Also got a slider. There's the slider. Three balls, no strikes. Chippu wouldn't mind a chance to hit again. And he will do so. Back to back. Washington walks. Two on, two out. Chippers three for six against Coffee. And a couple of doubles. To first on the first pitch. And Coffee to the bag retires the side in the Atlanta seventh. Brave strand a pair. They've left seven men, but lead the game by a 4 1 score. Pen. The first lefty out of the pen was Eric O'Flaherty, who worked a scoreless seventh. We'll see if Johnny Vetters can work a scoreless eighth tonight. Johnny had a, a real quick inning last night and no strikeouts. Three straight ground outs, which were just fine by him. Didn't have to work too hard. Just a 157 average against him. Braves press notes tell us that Vetters has posted three separate scoreless inning streaks of at least 15 innings this year. The last time a relief pitcher did that was 2003 when Real Cormier, Eric Gagne, and Guillermo Moda each 
had that kind of a run. His 22 and two thirds scoreless inning streak ended, but he gave up a couple of runs on August 26th against the Mets. But here in the eighth, he starts with Johnny Gomes, who's batting ninth on the Nationals lineup card. Johnny leads the majors in appearances. Says he feels good, strong, continues his workouts. Up the middle. Ugla behind the bag. Throws on the run. Stretch, but not in time. Gomes legs out an infield hit. Good play by Dan here to make this close. Had to throw off balance and yikes. That one was hard to tell. Lead off man on for Washington. Here's Desmond. Another look from now kick lighter in our high first camera angle. I think they got him. Well, we saw the replay three times and we're still not sure. Well, and that's a credit to Tim Timmons. And again, after what the way Tim Timmons handled that game against the Cubs with Zambrano, he said he was safe, then I'm going to go with Tim. Argument from the Braves as Gomes leads from first. You mentioned all the appearances for Johnny in the first half of the year. That was a big concern for the Braves. I know that Greg Maddox always talked about pitch counts and used it in this way. It's not the number of pitches, but the stress of the pitches. As ground ball slowly hit towards second. Two second. Desmond retired at first. When you have three scoreless streaks like Venters has had of 15 or more innings, how many stressful appearances has he had? And so is the number of appearances he made much to do about nothing? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know this that when he pitches, the game is usually on the line. It's, it's a close ball game uh, where. O'Flaherty, Venters, and Kimbrell are in line to try to finish up a close ball game. So I would have to assume that the majority of the outings he's been in have been somewhat stressful. With the batter, he's the only national to score tonight. A towering home run in the sixth off Tim Hudson. Tim looked real good again tonight. Six innings, five hits a run. Five strikeouts, two walks, trying to win his 13th career game against the Nets. It's a quick trip by McCann after that pitch, and he must have noticed something. You remember he fell behind Desmond 2 0. And it, when Johnny is off a little bit, it's usually because he's really falling off the mound some, pulling off his line. And you can see Brian, as soon as he caught that ball, was on the way to the hill. Side ball two. Braves lead late, but the heart of the Nationals order coming up a 4 1 game. And now 3 0. Runner at second tries to steal third, makes it. 
Close play. Gomes in ahead of the tag. He had a walking lead and took off. Heck of a job by McCann to make it this close. Well, you can understand why he broke because he had a huge lead. Nobody holding him. He had the walking lead and made it by the slimmest of margins, but not a smart play. First of all, you got Worth up there with a 3 and 0 count who might be swinging away. You don't want to distract him. I, I don't get that. It worked, but the risk versus the reward was very high with the heartier order up there. But Worth is at first. And the potential tying run in the batter's box, and Ryan Zimmerman stands in. Again, this guy's been squaring up some baseballs, lined out his last time up right after the home run by Worth. Hit the ball real hard the other way. Way outside. Another meeting for Brian McCann. Twice tonight when Tim Hudson was in some difficulty, the second and third inning. First and third, one out. He got a ground ball double play to Chipper. He started a double play. And Johnny's missing to the same side, to the same place. That's supposed to be inside, and when you pull off the ball, Fox track showing that that had the plate. And when you're pulling off or opening up too soon, it's hard to get that ball down and in, to bury it down and in. Nobody warming up, but that's about to change. Four straight loads the bases. Back to back Vetter's walks. Let's see if somebody pops out of the dugout to give the pen some time to get loose. Rodi's trouble is afoot. Rodi's Viscaino is the guy that got up. And he was loosening up early earlier, so it shouldn't take him too long. And the man in the batter's box has had a very productive and destructive series for the Washington offense. Michael Morse with a seven game hit streak against the Braves on the line, perhaps in this at bat. He's 0 for 3 tonight, but. Look at what he's done with the bases loaded. Two career grand slams both this year. Don't need any of that here. No. A lot of hitters after a meeting on the mound. Like to jump on that first pitch. What he's got a factor in though is that. Eight of the last nine pitches that. Venters has thrown have been. Out of the zone. You have to really shrink your strike zone if you're. Morse. Again, watch the front side of Venters. Very compact, but head flying off to the side, shoulder flying open. That was a pretty good pitch. Both he and McCann wanted that call. Where was it? Sherwin Williams painting the corners. Good pitch. But now 2 and 0. Oh. That's 11 of the last 12 that have missed. Pitcher spot due up next. And that's a pinch hitter Flores. Horse tossed the bat away. 
And now a 3-1 count. And he might be a little upset on the call, but he should want to hit. He should be running back to grab his bat. If you're the Nationals, you want him up there. Ground ball third. Chipper bobbles, drops, a run is in. And all hands are safe. It's 4-2. Gomes scores. We'll wait for the scoring. Ball came up on Chipper. He cut it out in the web of his glove, which is always hard then to retrieve the baseball out of the web, especially when you're in a hurry. And they're going to score it an E5. And I would bet that Morse will get an, R get an RBI on it anyway. So Morris does get the RBI. And now Flores bats with the bases loaded one out and an all-important first strike. And Flores hadn't been in the game in first pitch. He's barking at Mark Carlson. 0 for 4 in game one with three strikeouts. 0 for 2 with a walk last night. Put the ball in play a couple of times on the ground. And it's quickly down two strikes here. Two out. Henners takes care of Flores on three pitches. Nice cutter. And Danny Espinosa, the final Washington hope in the eighth. He's over three. With all that maneuvering they had to do in the outfield after Lance Nix strained a groin and they had to use Ann Keel, then on a double switch they put Gomes in. It really limited what Davey Johnson had on his bench. They haven't gotten all their players called up. If they're going to call any up, they're not here. I think the idea was to have them meet the team in Washington rather than come here for one day. And that was a big difference maker. Sending up a guy hitting 210 in Flores to pinch it with the bases loaded. Yeah, they could have potentially kept Mix in the game, had Ann Keeler Gomes for the late innings. They've still got Alex Cora. He's hitting 218, so he didn't have a whole lot to pick from over there, at least by my count. No balls, two strikes. All this trouble started with an infield hit by Gomes. Called safe on a bang bang play at first. Hitting over. Fenders with a fist pump into the glove. Won't be happy with the two walks. But two big strikeouts preserves an Atlanta lead. Washington leaves the bases loaded. 4-2 is your score in Atlanta.
Braves scored early. Got on the board in the first inning. A two out solo homer by Brian McCann, his 23rd of the year. Made it one to nothing. Then in the second inning, leading off the second, going the other way. Vintage Chipper Jones going to left center. His 15th homer made it two to nothing. Braves led three to nothing when Jason Worth popped that one up there near the terrace level. That was his 17th of the year. Braves added another run on a base hit by Alex Gonzalez with two outs. And the Nationals, if you were just with us, just picked up a run there in the top of the eighth. So 4-2. Freddie Freeman leads off against Tyler Clipper. He's had a spectacular year. Look at those eye-popping numbers. And made the all-star team. I believe among relievers, you know, Craig Kimbrell has struck out more batters than anybody out of the bullpen and Clifford second. With 87 strikeouts. And that's in 58 games. One ball, two strikes. This kid in the batter's box is still just 21. He turned 22 on September 12th. And a potential rookie of the year season for Freddie Freeman. 293 average, 59 runs, 18 homers, 64 RBIs. He's had 12 game winning RBIs. 38 multi hit games this year. First or second in just about every offensive category among rookie players. Clipper fires him a 94 mile an hour fastball, and that's the first out. And a while to think about the trivia question tonight. It's presented by ATT Universe TV. Ryan Zimmerman's 20 homers in 2006 tied a Washington Montreal rookie record. Whose record did Zimmerman tie? I'm going to go with Lee Stevens. It's a good call. I'm going to say there's a man that lives in Sanford, Florida, who used to play for the Expos, Tim Raines. Tim Rock Raines. Oh, Brad. Good low ball hitter. Struck out a lot. How many times would we have guessed wrong on that? Well, we already question. guessed wrong, wrong. I did about 20 of well, them. That's what I was going to say. At yeah. least 30 or 40 times. I thought I'd really pulled a coup in a. Jason rips that one into the right field corner. It sticks in the corner. And he's thinking about three. Big turn. The throw late. Boy, he has hit the ball all over the diamond tonight. Up the middle to the left side and now down the right field line for a three base hit. There aren't too many guys who square one up on the fastball from Clippard. Boy, oh boy, did he put a good swing on that. And I think some of this chip has to be the byproduct of him thinking up the middle earlier tonight that he's trusting his hands. And the only thing that made this remotely close was an unbelievably good and strong throw by Espinosa, who, whose natural position is shortstop. The second baseman threw a BB to third. Infield in now for Alex Gonzalez. 
Insurance run 90 feet away for the Braves who lead 4-2. Fly ball, well hit center. Worth at the edge of the track, hauls it in. And Alex Gonzalez with a big sacrifice fly makes it a 5-2 game. Big, big run right there and second RBI of the night for Alex. Clifford was ahead in the count. The fastball that had the plate and Alex squared that one up. 46 RBIs for him. And Martin Prado will pinch it for Johnny Venters. This guy coming in, Clifford with a 180 ERA. He gives up runs about as often as Johnny Venters for them both to give up a run in the same inning on the same night. Pretty coincidental. Lined and caught it first. Marrero climbs the ladder and hauls it in. Check the webbing, kid. Heck of a play to retire Atlanta in the eighth. But a triple and a sack fly extends the Atlanta lead. And Craig Kimbrell looks to add to his rookie save total in a moment. Bullpen is answered by Craig Kimbrell. 
Joe had the call of his record setting performance last night here in Atlanta. Tonight marks the third straight game for Craig in this series. And last night was his 41st save. As you said, Chip, and in the Braves franchise, John Smoltz with the highest marks among saves in three different seasons. But he's got a very good chance of at least climbing into third, certainly. Here's what he did last night struck out Worth. Got a fly ball from Zimmerman and then struck out Morris to end it. Got a big hug from. Brian McCann on a very good night and he can make it a, a great series if he can close this one up. And he's got the bottom part of the order coming up. It starts with Chris Marrero. The Nationals first baseman one four three tonight. As you'd expect any time a player sets a record like Kimbrell did the Baseball Hall of Fame comes a calling. Craig donated his spikes from last night's game to the Hall of Fame. Often make a laundry list of requests. They asked for the cap, but Craig said, "Nope." Let's see, cap I've had since opening day. If you want it, you gotta wait till the year's over. Good for him. <laughs> Strike three to Marrero. Yowza! One down. Ninety-eight on the black. Where can't does, hit that. Where does that strikeout put Kimbrell on the scoreless streak list? Tied with Cliff Lee for the longest in the year uh, in the major leagues this season. Somebody opened the radio set. I don't know if it was Jim or Don or maybe Ben, maybe Jay Howe on the pre and post game show. The former Brave. Somebody came up with a great idea. They've been calling all his strikeouts. Just another addition to Craigslist. Pretty good. And it's a long list. All the guys this man has struck out. He gets Marrero to start the ninth. Now 1-1 one, one count to Ramos. Up the middle. Two hit night for Ramos. So the Nationals not going quietly in the ninth. And here's Gomes. He scored the second Washington run an inning ago. Good fastball hitter, but a guy who will swing the bat. Doesn't walk much, strikes out a lot. Eighty-six on that slider. And whole hunt ninety-six for strike two. Braves lives coming up after our ball game tonight. The game that Atlanta leads 5 2. Better one strikes out Gomes. Yeah. 
You know, when you see a pitch live and you see that it's 88 miles an hour, you just can't wrap your brain around the fact that that was a slider. And I asked the truck, I said, well, I got to see that again from center field. And it is a slider and it is 88 miles an hour. You know how many guys would like to be able to throw 88 just straight? Holmes had to be muttering, that isn't fair. There's an 87 mile an hour slider. This guy, you don't want Worth coming to the plate with a chance to tie the game. And he's one strike away from ending it. Game over. Braves win it 5 2. Kimbrell strikes out the side in the ninth. And the Braves take two out of three from Washington. Great night at the ballpark. Kimbrell another save. And we'll wrap things up for you from Turner Field in a moment.